Your three o'clock is here. Oh, great. Send him in. Mr. Nestor! Hi! Thanks for coming in. Please, have a seat. I've got to say, I've been really excited to meet you. Um, I, I invest in a lot of ideas, but this device for evaporating cancer cells? I mean, it's revolutionary. This could change the world. Yeah, we're not doing that. Oh. Why not? I've got something new. It's way more important. More important than curing cancer? Oh, yeah. Just got the patent approved. As soon as you give me the money, we'll start building it. Device for tracking Melania Darcy. What's a Melania Darcy? She's my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. Oh, this isn't a disease or? <laughs> Let me get this straight. You, you created a device to track your ex-girlfriend. Yep. And for $50 million, we can get this puppy made. Are you in? $50 million? For one device? It's got a nanoscale biometric sensor, floating point propulsion, and a nuclear diamond battery that'll power it for 100 years. You can't buy that at Costco, Jack. I don't think I can justify spending $50 million for just one device. Tell you what, give me another 50 million and I'll make a device that'll track one of your ex-girlfriends. Huh? I don't have any interest in that. Oh, you don't have any ex-girlfriends? Couldn't get a girl touch a little wee-wee? No, I mean, Yes, that, no, I, what happened to the cancer thing? I was interested in the cancer thing. No, this is the priority. Look, you can't make a device to- This comes first! Look, once I can track every move she makes and every house she goes into and every guy she talks to for the rest of her life, then we can cure all the cancer you want. I think that's a pretty fair deal. Everything you just said is illegal. I'm not gonna do something illegal, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you rich or aren't you? Because I thought you were rich. Yeah, I've got money. Oh, since when do rich people give a flying sphincter about the law? Oh, sure, sure, you'll drink the blood of children, but tracking Melania Darcy, that's where you draw the line. We don't drink blood. What's in that cup? It's coffee. Listen, I, there's nothing else for us to talk about, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is how it happens, huh? This is how human advancement grinds to a halt. You could cure cancer. You could be that guy. That could be you. Millions upon millions of lives saved. Moms, kids, grandparents. You know a person dies every 50 seconds from cancer in this country? 600,000 people a year. And you're just gonna let them all die. From Melania Darcy? That sounds moral to you? She pours milk in the bowl before the cereal. She's not worth it. Okay, fine. Now we're talking. Yeah, let me get my banking information for you here. Melania, I'm so sorry. You sure you don't want one? No. Actually, what's Sarah up to? The first recorded patent was granted to Filippo Brunelleschi by the city-state of Florence in 1421. Brunelleschi became famous for building the dome of the Florence Cathedral. His patent was actually for inventing a means of carrying the marble slabs for the cathedral up the Arno River. The first patent in the United States was filed on July 31st, 1790. It was issued to Samuel Hopkins for a process of making potash, which is an ingredient in uh, fertilizer. Uh, the patent, by the way, signed by George Washington. I guess approving patents used to be part of the president's job. But they didn't actually start numbering patents until 1836. Uh, July 13th, 1836 to be exact. Patent number one was issued to John Ruggles for a traction wheel for steam locomotives. It would take 75 years to get to the one millionth patent. That was issued to Francis H. Holton for a tubeless vehicle tire on August 8th, 1911. And from there, the number of patents have gone up exponentially with the time between million patents getting smaller and smaller. Uh, we're somewhere between 11 and 12 million patents at this moment. But that's just in the United States. Worldwide, that number is way bigger. And as for what companies filed the most patents in 2022, Huawei Technologies was the top filer of international patent applications, followed by Samsung Electronics, Qualcomm, Mitsubishi Electric, and Ericsson. Like Huawei filed a patent in 2022 for a finite impulse response filter and receiver. And as the filing said, it would be, quote, arranged to receive an analog input signal and sample the analog input signal at a plurality of discrete points in time K with a sampling frequency FS to obtain a sampled analog input signal having a continuous signal value. You know, one of those things. 
But you know, not every patent can be as exciting as the finite impulse response filter and receiver. In fact, some of them are a little bit crazy. Because patents don't determine whether or not an idea is good or not. It just keeps other people from stealing your idea. No matter how weird it is. So I thought it might be kind of fun to take a look at some of the craziest patents of all time. And it turns out there's like a whole content ecosystem out there of crazy patent stuff. So I had plenty to work with. In fact, like half of them got cut out of this thing. I'll maybe do a part two later on. But anyway, I decided to have a little bit of fun with this and make a tier list out of it. Never done a tier list video before. Why not? So I'm ranking them on a scale of A to F, A being fairly clever and actually useful to F being basically what the F were they thinking. And at the top, I've got right there an S tier. In this case, S stands for somebody needs to make this. And the thing that I really enjoyed about this as I was looking through these is that no matter how weird or crazy or out there some of these ideas are, somebody put a lot of work into this, a lot of time and effort and thought, mechanical schematics and everything. Also, one of the cool things that I found when I was looking through these is that some of these ideas, as crazy as they might sound, uh, kind of make sense in the time that they were filed in, that you know, we put it in that perspective, or there's some purpose behind it that once you get that, it's like, oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Either way, this is meant to be a celebration of human ingenuity and human weirdness. Hope you enjoy it. First up is the crime skeleton. Okay, this was the one that actually gave me the idea to do this video in the first place. Uh, many of you may have seen the meme that was created around this and has been around the internet. It was invented by Helene Adelaide Shelby, and it's basically a skeleton with glowing red eyes that's supposed to scare people into confessing their crimes. It was controlled by an operator behind the wall here who could basically speak to the subject through a horn in the skeleton's mouth, and there was a camera in it to record the confession. So at the time, confessions weren't recorded because recording technology was still fairly primitive, so a lot of confessions would later be retracted. Well, she wanted to put an end to that. In her filing, she writes, It is a well-known fact that in criminal practice, the confessions obtained initially from those suspected of crimes through ordinary channels are almost invariably later retracted. And she described the skeleton this way, The primary object of my invention is the provision of an apparatus for the creation of illusory effects calculated to impress the subject with their being of a supernatural character and so to work upon their imagination. Now, unfortunately for this invention, coerced confessions became inadmissible after a Supreme Court ruling in 1961. Now, to be fair, the idea of using a hidden camera to catch criminals was actually pretty ahead of its time. Uh, like, part of the patent design is, is of a camera that would fit in the back of the skeleton's skull. It's also worth pointing out that at the time there was a huge spiritualist movement going on uh, with seances being really popular, all kinds of supernatural and occult practices going around. So yeah, at the time the idea of walking into a dark room and, and suddenly a floating skeleton with red eyes appears, that, that might make you admit something after soiling your pants. And I guess she felt pretty passionate about this because this was the only patent she ever filed. Uh, from what I could tell, she was a bit of a real estate maven, selling and leasing properties in Oakland, Santa Cruz, and San Francisco, and she died in 1947. So I'm gonna go with C tier for crazy. Next up is the High Five Machine. Filed by Albert Cohen in 1993, this machine lets you high five whenever you want by securing a plastic arm and a hand to a wall table or floor. According to the patent filing, the upper and lower arm portions would be covered with padding that closely emulates the shape of a human arm, and the arm could also be clothed with a shirt sleeve, uh, preferably one celebrating somebody's preferred sports team. Oh, and this part's actually kind of cool. The hand's interchangeable. Uh, if you don't want to slap an average size human hand, you could put an oversized or novelty hand on there, or say if you want a specific hand of a player from a sports team, the simulated hand could actually be an actual replica of that sports player that you like so much. So yeah, don't laugh too much. I actually think that's pretty cool if you could high five your favorite, you know, athlete or something. Like I've worked in sales rooms uh, where people would ring a bell whenever they made a big sale. I could see something like this being a fun office thing, you know, go, go give it a high five, maybe a song plays or something. But maybe even more so when you work at home, like, you know, you don't have anybody to high five or celebrate a little win with. Like, I, I don't know, I could see myself doing that when I finish a script. I actually think there could be a psychological benefit to, you know, just celebrating your little wins. Yeah, however you choose to do it, so why not? You know, this 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 mic could actually boost your mood a little. I could see it. So, silly, sure, but why not? Looks like fun. B tier. Next up is the world-famous butt-kicking machine. So look, if you're ever feeling down about yourself or what you've done in your life, just remember, someone spent a lot of time on this. The butt kicking machine is basically a chair with a hole at the bottom and a crank above your head that when you pull releases a spring-loaded boot that then kicks you in the butt. 
But it's way more important to that. According to the filing, quote, This invention consists of a manually self-operated butt-kicking machine which will be used to advocate the art and expand the science of butt-kicking technologies. Finally, yeah, which colleges have the best butt-kicking technology programs again? Asking for a friend. The secondary purpose of the machine, as it states, are, quote, encouraging, inspiring, and facilitating discussion, participation, motivation, competition, discipline, productivity, challenge, team building, morale, amusement, and fundraising. So, I mean, I guess some people might like this in a fetishy kind of way. Not gonna kink shame. Yeah, this might be the opposite of the high five machine. Like, if you don't get your task done, you get a boot in your ass. It's the American way. I also imagine that you gotta be careful how you sit if you're a guy, because, I mean, if you're off by just a few inches, that, that could be a problem. I might be kicking something other than your butt. Okay, so the only one of these that really stood out to me was fundraising. Like, I remember when I was, uh, when I was a kid, there would be these dunking booths at carnivals and whatnot where you could, you know, pay some money to dunk a teacher or a coach or a principal or something. Like, I could see something like this being used in that way. It wouldn't be self-operated, though. Yeah, I really only see this as a fetish thing, which, I mean, if that's for you, have at it, but I don't know. That's a, that's a D tier for me. Next up is Butt Kicking Machine 2 Electric Boogaloo. Okay, so this was patented five years before the previous butt kicking machine, and dare I say, it's four times better because it has four boots on it. Okay, so on one side you have this crank that you can rotate with your hands and it forces you to kind of bend over as you do it, and on the other side there are several rotating arms connected to a crank. And at the end of these arms are these flexible shoes, which when you turn the crank, the shoes kick the user's butt over and over and over. I imagine you could get a pretty good arm workout out of this, to be fair. But I mean, look at the size of this thing. It would take up like half the room. Like, who's gonna buy this? Who is this dedicated to getting their butt kicked that you would set this up? By the way, this is the perfect example of someone who spent a lot of time thinking about this. Like the filing just goes on for like 15 pages in extreme detail down to every single nut and bolt. And it references eight previous patents and technologies that they use in this device. My, my favorite thing about this one though, it was, it was patented literally like two weeks after 9-11. <laughs> That's what this guy was working on when 9-11 happened. It was just like, man, I gotta get serious about this thing. This is bonkers, but I admire the hustle. C tier. Next up is the toilet breathing hose. Okay, so I actually shared this as a meme on Twitter and uh, <laughs> it got quite a reaction. The device is actually called the Fresh Air Breathing Device and Method, which I think is a bit of a misnomer. Um, there's nothing fresh about the air you'd be breathing from this thing. But you would be breathing air, and that's the point. So toilet systems have to be connected to a downspout that you can see right here, I guess that's labeled number 15. Um, that allows air into the system, so the pressure is equalized. That's what allows the air to kind of flow down into the sewer or the septic tank. So if this didn't exist, it would create a vacuum and the water wouldn't flow. Kind of like if you put your finger on the top of a straw, the soda doesn't go down to the level in the cup. So from, from this direction up, it's actually going out of the building and there is air flowing in. So this is really designed for people who live in like high rise apartment buildings that might not be able to quickly get out of the building in case of a fire. So like basically if, if smoke is filling your apartment and you can't get out, maybe the fire's in the hallway, uh, maybe you're too high to jump out of the window or the window can't be broken, you're more likely to be killed by smoke inhalation. But this does give you a way to breathe. It would be the nastiest smelling and tasting air you've ever breathed, but you'll be able to breathe. Yeah, a lot of people on Twitter said that there was something like this in the, in the Kingsman movies. I haven't seen them, but if it's in a movie, you know it must work. But I gotta be honest, I mean, I would really hope that I would never have to actually use something like this, but I mean, this could save someone's life. I mean, look, any plumbers or septic professionals, feel free to disagree in the comments because I'm not a professional, but this could actually maybe save someone's life. So, I mean, yeah, this, this is kind of the real deal. That's an A tier for me. The next one up is a little device that I'm calling, but why? This thing confuses the hell out of me. It was patented in 1896 by James C. Boyle, and it's supposed to be a hands-free saluting device. But I think all it really does is like lift your hat and turn it sideways, which isn't a salute. Is it? Also, I don't know how you turn it around, like without using your hand. How does it know to do that? It doesn't really say in the patent that I could tell. Also, it has these little things. It looks like it digs into your head, so it's probably uncomfortable, on top of the fact that it's got this heavy, you know, mechanism up on the top. 
that probably throws the whole thing off balance. So that's fun. You can walk around in a painful heavy hat that you can spin around on your head when you meet people so they think you're a weirdo. But according to the patent, uh, that's not a bug, it's a feature. He says that you could possibly use it as an advertising medium because the hat moving up and down on its own is sure to draw attention. Sorry, this is just stupid. This is stupid in every way, F tier. Okay, next up is the rat treadmill. Yeah, someone made a treadmill for a rat. Yeah, I don't want no fat flabby rats running around my place. Actually, it doesn't just give them a surface to run on. As you can see down here on this diagram here, it actually holds its back legs and moves them around for the rat, which is better illustrated in figure four. Th this is for the rats that just refuse to use a hamster wheel. This is for the lazy rats. Actually, okay, enough with the jokes. Uh, this device actually does have a serious purpose. It's not for lazy rats. It's for rats with spinal cord injuries. So as it says here in the application, it says in the US alone, over 10,000 people experience a traumatic spinal cord injury each year. Paralysis of the legs is a common consequence of spinal cord injury, resulting in a loss of walking ability. Recently, a new approach to rehabilitation called body weight supported locomotion training has shown promise. The technique involves suspending a spinal cord injured subject in a harness above a treadmill and manually assisting the movement of the legs in a walking pattern. The goal of this technique is to enhance residual mo locomotor control circuitry that resides in the spinal cord. It's hypothesized that by providing an appropriate sensory input in a repetitive manner, the spinal cord can learn to generate motor output appropriate for stepping. So this was a field of study that came about in the early 2000s. It probably started way before that, but like all medical hypotheses, they wanted to test this out on rodents before they did it with people. So how do you test this out on a rat? You need a rat treadmill. So yeah, some very smart people put together this very detailed patent application. This is easily the most detailed one that I ran across. Uh, this is done in order to test this theory that you, know, you could uh, help people with spinal injuries to walk again someday. Uh, I guess the big question is, does it actually work? Like, did this invention actually possibly lead to somebody being able to walk again? Feels like the answer's still up in the air. There is this paper from 2012, uh, and according to this paper, it says that the results have been disappointing, but they do offer new modalities to possibly make it work better. Of course, this was 10 years ago, so maybe something's come along since then. But hey, that's science, you know? If it works, great. If not, you still learn something. So yeah, I'm gonna give this an S tier for science. Next up is what I'm calling the Brass Monkey Balls Drop. Okay, so the title of this patent is simply Release Mechanism, but the release mechanism is specifically designed to make two brass balls fall out of the bottom of a monkey statue. Yeah, so it's basically a thermometer. The mechanism is made out of thermoreactive metal that flexes at a certain temperature point, so when you set what temperature you want, uh, when the room reaches that temperature, the metal reacts, the balls drop, they go clang, and then you know it's, you know, 74 degrees or whatever. This was patented in 1987. Thermometers have been around for a long time at that point. This is, this is stupid. This is a useless novelty toy that's basically designed to make middle-aged men giggle, because balls. Yeah, that, that, that's an F tier for me. Next up is the plow gun. Okay, so the year is 1862. Civil War is in its early days. People were probably pretty scared of the war showing up on their front doorstep. I imagine especially farmers. Like, imagine you're out plowing the field, trying to grow some crops to support your family, when suddenly Antietam breaks out all around you and you've got this gingham to plant. What's a farmer to do? Well, thankfully, two guys named C.M. French and W.F. Fancher came up with... the plow gun. The thing that's brilliant about the plow gun, you see, is that it's a plow that has a gun on it. So, you know, you can just shoot your way out of the battle, let the soldiers do their thing, and fertilize the field with their bodies. The only flaw that I can see in this plan, and I'm no expert in like historical agriculture or anything, but aren't plows pulled by a horse or oxen? So wouldn't this just, you know, shoot your horse in the ass? Yeah, a horse murdering plow, E tier. Next one up is the human car wash. This one just, I can't, I, uh, I'm grossed out in every way by this one. This is basically a giant machine designed to wash like dozens of people at a time. You literally hang people, and, and by people, I mean actual human beings, on this like motorized track system, like a processed deer. And that person is then hoisted on a conveyor through a series of water hoses and swirling brushes, just like a car wash eventually blown dry at the end and buffed to a smooth shine. I'm assuming a little air freshener gets stuck in you somewhere. So this is weird and gross and horrifying, but it's, 
It's basically designed for like mental hospitals. It, it's meant to make it safer and easier to bathe people who are mentally incapacitated. So in the patent here, it says it's designed to create conditions that quote, minimize the danger of infirm or mentally incapacitated injuring themselves or others by struggling during the bathing procedure and that provide improved sanitation and that all steps of the bathing procedure are accomplished with the patient in a standing position such that washcloths and towels are not needed. And look, I've, I've never worked at a mental hospital. I've never worked one-on-one -on -one with mentally incapacitated people. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that bathing them is a challenge to say the least maybe even fraught with danger. Like somebody who works in that environment might see this idea and be like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But still, I mean, just, ah. The idea of just strapping someone to a track and running through, through a machine like this, especially if they're not really knowing what's going on, I can't see that as not being traumatizing. Like this was patented in the 60s. I think they were still doing lobotomies back then. I don't know, this just feels like one of those ideas that people came up with back then that they thought were more humane, but with time just seems horrible. But again, I don't work in that world. Maybe something like this actually exists. I mean, please let me know in the comments if it does. But I feel like their heart was in the right place. Ah, I don't know. I hate everything about this C tier. Okay, so there's one more I want to put on here. It's by far the craziest in my opinion. I'm saving the best for last. But before I get to it, I just want to comment really quickly about how no matter how crazy some of these ideas seem, you kind of have to applaud the human ingenuity behind it. Like, I'm having fun here. I'm poking fun at these ideas, but the people who made them, they, they took this really seriously. Like, I'll put the links to all the patents down in the description. You can go look at them. They're very detailed and descriptive, down to the very last nut and bolt, even if it was just a gag gift or, or a novelty product. These inventors took the engineering very seriously. And frankly, this is why we should all learn more STEM skills. It gives you the tools to do fun stuff like this. And if you want to give your STEM skills a little boost, brilliant.org is a great place to do that. It's a great place to learn new skills and scientific concepts from the fundamentals of math and basic engineering through neural networks and quantum physics. There's a wide range of topics at all levels of expertise, so no matter where you are, there's room to grow. And Brilliant teaches you in a fun, interactive way through problem solving, kind of hacking your brain's natural abilities so that when you learn something, you learn it in a way that makes sense to you and you can build on that and apply it to other areas of your life. Like it doesn't so much teach you facts, it kind of teaches you how to think about things. You learn by doing. It's a whole different kind of learning. I really wish that we were doing this when I was in school. It's kind of really more like playing games. So like if you spend a lot of time playing games on your phone or whatever, you could be doing this and getting smarter in the process by accident. Plus they add new content monthly so you never run out of new things to learn. And right now, if you click on the link in the description and go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe, you can get a full 30 days to try it out for free. And the first 200 to sign up will get 20% off their annual subscription. Uh, it's a great platform. I use it myself and I can tell you, you just won't believe how much value you get out of it. Uh, so yeah, go give it a try. See for yourself. It's free for 30 days. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. And thanks to Brilliant for kindly sponsoring this video. Last but not least, the baby flinger. So to all the moms out there, don't you wish when you were giving birth that the whole process could have been made simpler and easier? They just, you know, spun your body around really fast so the baby just yeets out of you through centrifugal force. Wouldn't that have made the whole thing so much better? No? You sure about that? Because George and Charlotte Blonsky disagree, so they patented a birthing table that would do exactly that. This is not a joke. So the patent application starts off with this little doozy. It is known that due to natural anatomical conditions, the fetus needs the application of considerable propelling force to enable it to push aside the constricting vaginal walls to overcome the friction of the uteral and vaginal surfaces and to counteract the atmospheric pressure opposing the emergence of the child. Yeah, I'm not an obstetrician, but I'm pretty sure that the atmospheric pressure difference between the uterus and the delivery room is not the main hurdle to overcome when giving birth. And it goes on to get, um, a little bit racist? It says, in the case of a woman who has a fully developed muscular system and has had ample physical exertion all through the pregnancy, as is common with all the more primitive peoples, nature provides all the necessary equipment and power to have a normal and quick delivery. This is not the case, however, with more civilized women who often do not have the opportunity to develop the muscles needed in confinement. So thankfully, all those pygmy people living in the Amazon rainforest don't need this. That's a relief. Besides, I'm not sure this is any less physically exerting. So I couldn't find in the application exactly how much pressure is needed in general to push a baby out and how that, you know, corresponds with G-forces, but they did have a chart on there that shows how many RPMs would be needed to generate different G-forces at waist level, and it's all around about one rotation a second. So yeah, this fast. Enjoy, Mom!
Not to mention that humans pass out at about four or five Gs. Now granted the head is in the middle here, but the blood would still rush down to your feet, wouldn't it? By the way, if you're wondering how exactly you catch this baby so it doesn't go splat against the wall, don't worry. They've, they've, they've got a little net here. A little hockey goal. And it does say that there's a little mechanism attached to the net that'll, that'll turn off the machine once the baby gets caught in it, and it rings a bell to signify the act has been done. See, they've thought of everything. Now, as ridiculous as this is, um, there are cases of women going into labor on roller coasters. So, I don't know, maybe if you're having trouble going into labor, this could speed that along. This is the most insane and fascinating thing I've ever heard of. So somebody needs to make this, S tier. All right, so there you go, guys. There you have it. That is the uh, craziest patents tier list. There were about 10 or so of these. Again, I actually found 22 to start with. So if you guys like this and this video does well, there could be a part two. <laughs> there could be many parts, actually. Uh, yeah, and, and that just scrapes the surface. Again, there are 11 million plus patents in the United States alone. That's a lot of room for crazy. I mean, and, th and then think about all the ideas that somebody sat down and, and, and figured out in this way, but never bothered to patent it because they thought it was too crazy. But I feel like this is a fascinating insight into the human imagination that, you know, even on silly novelty ideas, people took the time to, you know, figure out the engineering and work it out. And it's that kind of creative thinking that every once in a while produces a breakthrough that changes the world. For every quantum computer, there's a monkey ball dropper. And I think that's beautiful. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. Big thanks and a shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members who are helping to keep the lights on around here. And more importantly, forming an awesome community. I love bouncing ideas off of these guys and uh, just watching them interact. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, there's some new Patreon people I need to shout out. We got Alina Jackson, uh, Miss Bizzle, James Redden, Daniel Tennyson, Hero, uh, Kristen DeLisavoy, William Leitenfelter, Tommaso Valeriano, Dave Perry, Mark Denu, Courtney, Marsha Hackenberg, and Rob Hawkins. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get early access to videos, access to exclusive live streams, and again, just be part of a really cool community. Uh, just go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video. Google thinks you'll like that one. Or look at any of the little thumbnails on the sidebar if you're watching it on your on your browser. Uh, any of them that have my, my little picture on it. Give them a click, see if you like it. And if you do, I invite you to subscribe. Come back with videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.